Just a few things that I have learned in my first couple of months as a faculty member at University of Rochester. So at first I was kind of a little bit concerned that moving from a kind of a big public school with a big brand name, University of California, was going to kind of um, be in a way a downgrade, even though for family purposes, it was definitely the right decision to make. I'm in um, basically 15 miles from my mom, four miles from my sister, and my niece and my daughter get to kind of grow up like sisters because they're both only children. Um, but, you know, financially it was a good move because housing costs in California are absolutely out of control. I have no idea how grad students manage um, prices like, you know, $3,600 per 800 square feet for a typical one bedroom apartment. It just blows my mind. It's like three times more expensive than it is here. And the stipend isn't even that much higher, but <laughs> I digress. Um, but, you know, a couple of other things came to mind. Let's say fairly prestigious private institutions get a bad uh, rap because they're so expensive or their sticker price is so high. But given the amount of uh, financial aid and tuition discounts that they receive, um, you're probably better off in terms of the education that you get if you are kind of lower middle class or working class uh, family that uh, very f none of those people are paying full price for a for a good private school, particularly a good private R1 like University of Rochester. We actually cover most, you know, need and although that's a that's a um, kind of controversial statement because some of that is in the form of subsidized loans, uh, which, you know, you have to pay back. It's uh, It still ends up being a good deal compared to if you're going to a public institution that um, th where you're an out-of-state resident, where you pay kind of the full out-of-state price. So it's uh, it's good from that standpoint. If I'm comparing the department I left to the department I'm at right now, the student-to-faculty ratio is definitely one of the the ways in which University of Rochester totally wins out. So we're about eight to one student to faculty ratio. Um, we have about uh, you know, 20 to 30 students per class. So that's freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. And um, everyone graduates in four years unless something went wrong or you took the Take 5 program, which is actually kind of encouraged. If you wanted to do a minor or a double major, you do the Take 5 thing. It's also really easy to get into the BSMS program here through a couple of different options, one of them um, being the GEAR program, which gives you automatic admission in engineering to any of the other engineering departments uh, that you want. So say you start out in chemical engineering, but you want an MS in biomedical engineering, that's really easy to do. Another thing is kind of like the maintenance. So private universities in the uh, in the east, east of the Mississippi, are old, right? The infrastructure, a lot of it is old, but it's really well maintained. So yesterday we had a meeting to discuss a grant proposal in um, emerging complexity in biomaterials. And the organizers had it in the space in the Rush Rees Library, which is one of uh, Rochester's kind of um, iconic buildings. And, uh, and it was, the building is from 1930, but the room was, was modern, but also had the classic charm, the wood panels and all that stuff. Um, there was, uh, the, the, the upkeep is really, is really outstanding. I feel like, um, at my previous institution, they would build a lot of new buildings, like mainly freshman dorms. But then if you look at the buildings that were new a couple decades ago, they're like 
not kept up. And uh, so the capital improvements on property that already exists, they're not really investing in it. At least that was my impression, just you know, someone who was there for 12 years. But whereas I think at a private institution, they keep these things up. Um, there's another thing I noticed where like the construction quality is, is better in many cases. And also the even maintenance of day-to-day -day living kinds of things, like they take the trash out. Like in my old office, I wasn't allowed to put food waste in my office trash because they only took it out like once or twice per week. But if I want to have lunch in my office and I want to put the trash in the trash can, they'll take it out and someone gets, uh, you know, someone gets a, a living wage in Rochester to, to do that. And you know, we employ a lot of people. University of Rochester is the largest private employer in New York State outside of New York City. Another thing is collaboration. I feel like universities that get their U.S. News and World Report ranking for undergraduate education on the backs of research prestige it doesn't really make sense like for the the normal uh the median undergraduate student or high school applic applicant to college to go to a school that is maybe in the top 10 or top 20 for uh you know overall most of that is actually because of research prestige not teaching prestige and your class sizes are going to be really, uh, really big, and um, an undergraduate education may not be taken like that seriously. I can tell you that even though University of Rochester has a lower um, uh, U.S. News and World Report ranking than UC San Diego, the the high touch environment of the faculty student interaction i mean the the care that faculty put into classroom instruction is just not really even close i mean how how could it be the class sizes at a big public institution are just so gigantic so in that in that sense if you're thinking about you know going to the University of Rochester, it might actually make a lot of sense from the standpoint of student to faculty ratio and also access to research labs. Well, if you're considering the University of Rochester, one of the things you may have heard about is the weather and how Rochester for a while was considered the snowiest medium to large size city in the United States, got about 100 inches of snow per year. Now, for the last two years, it's been less than 50 inches. Last year, I think it was no more than 30 inches of snow. And because it wasn't that cold, the snow kind of fell and then melted right away. Um, the other kind of misnomer that, or misconception that you'll see about the weather in Rochester is that it's, uh, that it has a high fraction of cloudy days. And while there are clouds in the sky, I'm not sure if you can see right now because the sun is kind of bleaching out, but it's actually, like, there are a few wisps of clouds, but it's actually, um, like 90% blue, but if you look at the weather app, a day like today is actually going to appear to be, it's going to have the cloudy icon, but it's definitely not, uh, not cloudy. Let me see if I can kind of get, get the blue to kind of appear in here. Oh uh, no, it's going to stay. It's going to stay <laughs> white. Um, but it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's not cloudy. You can tell how bright it is from the sun in the back window of my car. I actually prefer the weather in Rochester to the weather in San Diego in nine months of the year. And I don't think that's just because I was born in Rochester and grew up in a nearby town. Uh, it's because the summer is like actually warm. Like when you get out of the pool 
you're, or a water park or something, you're not gonna feel cold if a cloud goes over the sun. Um, it's warm at night. You don't need a jacket. You don't even need to take a jacket with you in the summer. Yeah, granted, it's a little more humid, but you know, you don't get one without the other and it's not nearly as humid as the, uh, as the South or even the East Coast like Boston or New York or Philadelphia or Washington DC, which are super humid in the summer because of the ocean. We have sandy beaches in Rochester, so it's little known that uh, people who have not seen one of the Great Lakes before go to a sandy beach for Lake Ontario and they just think it's a calm day at the ocean really like that's what it looks like it goes on as far as the eye can see uh no <laughs> very few visual differences there in the fall the fall is absolutely beautiful a little bit of chill in the air and then fall goes really well with the culture here because there are a lot of farm markets a lot of fall fruits and vegetables like apples and pumpkins and corn and squash and you can go pick stuff and go on haunted Halloween hay rides and stuff. It's really, uh, really quite special. There are also the leaves that change colors and are really beautiful. And granted, once you get to about, you know, midway through November and all the leaves are gone, you know, the trees look like they're dead. They're not, they're just dormant for the time being. Uh, the evergreen trees, and we have a lot of them. We have a lot of, um, a lot of pine and spruce and uh, things like that. And they stay green um, all throughout the winter. Another thing that we have is natural beauty, like in the form of, uh, of the Genesee River and the Genesee River Gorge, uh, gorges, which occur uh, kind of an hour south of here, a little, maybe a little less than that in Letchworth State Park, which is called the Grand Canyon of the East. Not quite as spectacular as the Grand Canyon, but it is, uh, it, you know, it's really beautiful. There's like a three tall waterfalls. One of them at least is taller than Niagara Falls, which is pretty, um, pretty amazing. And um, we have the Finger Lakes, the Finger Lakes wine region, which is very close by. And it's just a very uh, calm, peaceful place to study and work in a lab. University of Rochester happens to be very close to uh, RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. And what's really nice is that parking there at RIT, which is only less, just under four mi or five miles from U of R um, South on basically one road, well, a particularly beautiful road along the river, um, parking there is free and you can use their machine shops and maker spaces and basically anything that they don't have at U of R, you can go over there and use. Their clean room is spectacular. You can do like microfabric, uh, sorry, microfabrication for processors that would have been state of the art like, you know, 15, 20 years ago. You can actually do all of that work and get trained up for careers in micro, uh, microfabrication engineering. Um, it's really quite an amazing resource to have. <laughs> it's really quite an amazing resource to have so close by. Parking is, is ample uh, throughout uh, University of, of Rochester um, and uh, parking spaces are wide compared to pretty much every place I've ever lived. Uh, the streets are, are never overly filled with traffic. Um, it's really a really a peaceful place. In the winter, like if you like winter sports, like cross-country skiing, it's pretty spectacular. Coffee and tea taste better when there's a little bit of chill in the air. It's just, it just happens to be true. So yeah, if you're thinking about a place to go for undergraduate, masters, PhD in chemical engineering, where um, I happen to be the, the new chair of the department, I think you'd do really well by coming here. So check us out, 
send me an email, um, darren.lapomi at rochester.edu. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions about U of R and chemical engineering. And, uh, and yeah, take care.